I'm going to show you how I use the Moza Aircross 3 to get smooth gimbal footage that can even make a shopping cart go viral. Regardless of what gimbal you are choosing to shoot your videos with, you may encounter problems like these. <gasps> Yo, my gimbal just fell. <laughs> Which gets me on to tip one, balance your gimbal. To confirm you have proper balance, put the camera in any position and it will stay still. Now this gimbal has a vertical sliding mount. So when I do swap to vertical filming, I do have to rebalance it, which is half practical, but also half annoying. But as I mentioned in my other videos, you have to decide whether you will shoot vertically or horizontally because number one, it never looks good when you try to fit something big into something small. And number two, it allows you to properly compose things for the media that you're going to film at. I find that my best videos on Instagram happen when I film vertically. All right, time for some practical tips. Tip number two is to preview your moves first. A mistake I see a lot of people make is that they're trying to improvise everything. I don't know what I'm doing! When they're filming, not only do they have to focus on the path of the camera, but also the composition of the shot, the angle, your foot placement. So they end up improvising all of that and they'll end up filming, think it's fine. Previewing your shots will make you more accurate and even help you find out whether you should do a push-in shot or a parallax. Wait, parallax? Wait, you don't know your basic camera movements? Uh... Step three is to learn the basic camera movements. Knowing these four basic moves will allow you to capture all the footage you need to make a decent video because you'll be able to seamlessly transition between them. The push and pull. Always start with the shot. I recommend setting the angle you want to shoot the car at and then change the gimbal settings to all locked so that you don't accidentally sway to the sides or up and down. This prevents additional movement that will make your speed ramps look shaky. Another tip is to pick four locations to do it from, say the front of the car, the interior, the profile. Once you get good at this, you can change to FPV mode and add some changes in the roll axis, the tilt, etc., to make your videos more dynamic. The second basic camera movement that you need to know is the parallax. This basically means an orbit around the subject. Set your gimbal to pan follow or pan only mode and try to keep something in the center. It can be anything. A close up of the car, logo spoiler exhaust, or it can be a wide shot of the car from one of the four corners. My advice is to try and keep the motion consistent. You can take your time as you will speed ramp it later or if you shoot at a higher frame rate you can always slow it down. The reason this is an essential move is because you can transition to and from different shots with this same movement with some simple speed ramps. The crane movement. Put your gimbal on follow mode or tilt only mode and bring the gimbal up as you tilt down or vice versa. And this is a nice move that helps break up the standard left to right and forwards to backwards. But the hardest yet the most rewarding shot to get is the POV robot shot. <laughs> I don't even know what to name it. For this one, pretend that you're one of those camera robots. Set your gimbal to POV or FPV mode and this effect is mainly done in camera. Think about three or four places you want your camera to be at and then essentially you want to move to these places, stop, move again, stop and repeat. When it comes to editing, you're just going to do some speed ramping. I got tons of questions on Instagram about this effect, so I might do a dedicated video. But my advice is that when you go to different points, make sure to not only change how close you are to the point, but change the perspective, the horizon or the tilt of the angle. The more changes in the movement, the better the effect will look. Now, once you do all those four shots, you have earned the privilege to f around and try something different. Bonus tip, stop just looking down at the car all the time. Get your ass low down or flip the gimbal upside down to get more aggressive shots of the car by looking up at them. And if you struggle to do this with the gimbal upside down, you don't want to sleep on the experience of using a two handle grip. It completely elevated my experience with using a gimbal with filming these cars, especially because number one, I can now hold the camera pretty low down or even upside down and I have so much more control. Usually when you have just the grip, you really have to rely on your wrist. Whereas with this, you have more movement that you can get because you have a wider angle of turn. Honestly, I've got the best shots I've ever got filming cars with it. And all the big dogs use it. So become like a big dog. Secret tip number four, feet. I mean, watch your feet as you move. The general rule of thumb is to have your feet pointing in the direction that you are moving. Don't crab walk. You're not this guy. Also, move those legs slow, have a bend in the knees. Tip number five is to stabilize before speed ramping. So if your footage is shaky to begin with, speed ramping it is still gonna be shaky. In fact, it will emphasize it. So try stabilize your footage with warp stabilizer, then nest it, and then do the speed ramps. But my secret sauce is that I shoot with a Sony camera, specifically the a7C, that logs gyro data, which means that with the Catalyst Browse app, I can get rid of all the micro jitters. And this works for all the cameras after the a7Cs. 